Hi everyone, and welcome back to video 3 in the Go series on imports and project structure. I debated a bit on putting this video so early in the series, but I think that this will actually be very useful for anyone learning and trying to understand how external and local packages work as we move forward. I tend to mix my learning sources up sometimes, so understanding how to play around with other packages and be able to make something a little bit more involved as a learning challenge has always been fun for me. If this is too advanced, or maybe you're new to programming, feel free to save this video for later and come back after learning more of the fundamentals from the future videos. This video in particular, we're going to discuss Go mods for dependency management, local library packages and imports, remote library package imports, and how we can do multiple files to compose a package. But first, let's take a look at Go mod. GoMod is a dependency manager for Go that tr or keeps track of your various packages. A lot of people that are familiar with Python may have been familiar with something like the requirements file where you kind of keep and track all of your versions, but if you're not, what this does is it keeps your language versions, it ensures that you pin to specific versions of the packages that you're using, and make sure that you're not using something that's either too new or too old for the code that you're expected to actually run on your saved files. So to get started, we want to always run in a new package, and this is related to the file structure. When you're creating new uh, projects, you want to always run a go mod init. And as you can see in the terminal here, go mod init, and then I like to always call it the project name that I'm actually working with. So for here, we're just going to call this a project layout. Once we execute this command, it's going to create a go mod file for us. So let's take a look at that on the left. The go, go mod file has like a go version and it also mentions like the actual module that we named this. So a couple things, go mod is like I mentioned going to track the versions that we have and we'll see that with a remote package but it's also going to when we pull in these dependencies create a go sum file. That's actually going to have the checksums of the actual packages and dependencies that we're pulling in. So we have our initial go mod set up, which will be useful when we attempt to actually import these. But uh, let's see how we can first import like a local library package. I always found this useful when I want to split out things. So I want to mention that go only allows you to set one package per directory level. So since we've already been using this main package here, if we go back over to main.go. And you can kind of see that we've used main and we need to actually create something different for a library. So we can't actually create like a uh, package library, for example, in the same directory. So I've created something called uh, hello here, this hello directory. And in hello, I've created a hello.go file. This is going to be a mock-up of our library that we're essentially creating locally. Let's say that we have a specific, either our greetings or hello directory, and we want to make that a package. So we have a package hello here. It's a little bit different than main because with main, as I had mentioned before with main, that's for executables, but this will be just for imports. So let's see how we can actually import this here. So what we want to do is if we think about when we ran the go mod init project layout, and we take another peek back at go mod, we can see that the module is project layout. So project layout kind of gives us like a virtual path for our actual directory for our project. And anything inside of here, so we have this module and since we've created hello, we're actually gonna to wanna to make that our import path. So as we did format our FMT before, for actually printing things, what we're gonna do here is we're going to do project layout. And then since we made the directory hello, We'll call it hello. And how we can actually prove that this is going to work, if we take a look at hello.go, we can see that we made the function as hello, and that just prints out hello world from package hello.go. So let's actually get that imported and working for our main. Under the main function, we're going to do hello dot hello. And that's going to pull in from the hello package the hello function. Now let's save. And we'll run go run and that go. As you can see, now it says hello world from package hello.go. So we've successfully split out our code into this directory in this actual package called hello. And we're able to use the functions that are over there. Alright, now next 
let's take a look at how we would do a remote package. And what do I mean by a remote package? So if you're already familiar with coding, it will probably be simpler to think about a remote package as like a package that you'd get from a third party, someone that's created it, you're importing it and using it. For our specific use case, we'll use a package from GitHub that essentially prints out uh, emojis that someone's already created. Seemed like an easy one that we could display and also kind of illustrate like what's going on here. So first we need to start by getting the package to set the package inversion. As we mentioned, we want to add this to our go mod, but what we can do here is we can actually use this command called go git. And within go git, you can actually specify the kind of GitHub short path here. So github.com, user's name, the package. And we run this, and we can see that two things happened. Go mod updated. Now it says require, and it has the version number of the package and the package name. And in go sum, we can see that there's the checksum for the package. Well, so we've got this imported with the right version that we're going to be using. But now how do we actually go about using it? So if we take a look at our main.go, first things first is we're going to want to import this here. So the same kind of way we did a go get on it, and we're actually going to just take the shorthand path from, we're going to paste this in, and that's going to import the package there. So we've uh, uh, retrieved it, and now we're going to import it. And now let's just see, we can actually try to print out a waving hand, for example. So we're going to do front.printline, did with hello world, and looks like we can try from this package, og. There's all kinds of different things that we can see here. We'll do waving, and then you can specify tone. We'll just leave that blank for now. As you can see, format is red, and that's because it's not imported up here. But with that actual extension that I suggested that you guys get for Go, when you save, it should import that. Looks like it's going to fight me on it here. So import it here. I see the issue. So the reason that that didn't import is because I have a typo here. Now, if we save, it imports automatically for us. So we'll save and we'll do a go run main.go. And there we go. So now we're printing not only our message from the hello package, but also the print line with the waving hand, which is the remote package that we got from GitHub. And we see the hand down here. There's tons of things that you can do with remote packages. And there's frameworks for creating websites and everything else. And we'll get a little further into a few specific ones. But for right now, just know that you can poke around on GitHub with uh, Go packages and you can import them in and test them out and see what they can actually do with the examples there if you're learning. So next, what I want to show is how we can actually take functions. We've been using this main package, for example, but how do we actually split out our functions in different files for our project structure? One way to actually do that is we've seen that you can create a different package uh, like the hello package and use those with specifying things. But what if you want everything to kind of just fall under main? So one way of doing that, you can create some custom functions and you've probably been wondering why this goodbye.go file here is here. We click on that. We can see that that's using package main, but it's a separate file. And all this is doing is assigning a function called goodbye and within that function, we're actually doing a print line and you know just printing out something that is going to show us that this, this function is working as expected. One thing I do want to mention is if you are setting a function within the same package that you want to use, you have to make sure that you capitalize the function name because that makes it public so you can actually use it in different areas. If it's lowercase, this isn't going to work as expected. So we have this function. And it's declared under main. So the next question is, how do we actually go about using this in our main.go file? Since our main.go file is our primary file where everything is basically flowing through, and that's going to be the executable for our uh, binary. Well, easy enough is if you actually want to use one of these, since it's under the same package, even though it's under a different file, all you have to do 
is all that function with the name and two parentheses. And let's see if this works. Do go run main.go. Ah, looks like we ran into an issue. So why is this? This is a good learning scenario here. So if we actually look, we did go run main.go, but we have our code in goodbye.go. So when we run this, we need to make sure that we're also including any other file because it's not actually compiled here. So if we actually include goodbye.go and run this again, there we go. Now we get goodbye, showing how package imports work in the same directory, everything the same, just split up. So everything is printing as expected. We have a remote call, we have our local call from our new package, and we have the a local function that we created in the goodbye.go. I hope this easily shows how you can structure your code in local packages, functions, and how you can import remote packages and use those in your, in your project. But I also hope this explains some of the concepts for future videos if we're using some of these different imports. I want uh, everyone to understand and I want you to be able to like look at the code and actually see how things are linking together here and be able to actually replicate this in your own projects so you can organize things in a neat, nice manner. So the next video that we're actually going to be creating is going to be on data types in Go. I'm going to create something that's going to be in the basic data types and then after that we're going to go into individual videos on advanced data types because those take a little bit longer to kind of grasp and grok but also to explain so it's uh, easily digestible there. But if this video was helpful for you, please like and subscribe for more and I will see you guys in the next one.